first of all we will discuss about the modes of plant reproduction crop plants has two modes of reproduction asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction first of all we learn about the asexual reproduction in this mode progeny plants are developed without the fusion of male and female gametes it is further divided into two groups vegetative reproduction and apomixis in vegetative reproduction any somatic plant part is used to develop a progeny plant it is further divided into two categories natural and artificial in natural type vegetative reproduction is found naturally in plants such as rhizome in ginger and turmeric potato in tuber bulb in onion and garlic corum in arbi and sakkar in mint in artificial type vegetative reproduction is done in plants artificially by human efforts such as stem cuttings in sugarcane root cuttings in sweet potato other methods are budding grafting layering and gutti tissue culturing is also used in orchids and oil palm secondly we will discuss about apomixis when embryo and seeds are developed without fertilization then it is called as apomixis genotypes of these progenies are just identical to their parents apomixis is further divided into three types the first type is adventive embryony when embryo is developed from any vegetative cell of ovule such as integument or chalaza without forming embryo sac then the process is called adventive embryony for example in mango and citrus second type is apospore when embryo sac is developed from any somatic cell of ovule without meiosis then it is called apospore it means here megaspore is not formed each cell of embryo sac is diploid embryo is developed from the any cell of embryo sac for example in crepes plant third type is diplospore when embryo sac is developed from diploid megaspore then it is called diplospore megaspore is diploid due to develop without meiosis hence each cell of embryo sac is also diploid embryo formation occurs without fertilization it is further divided into two types parthenogenesis and apogamy in parthenogenesis embryo is developed from egg cell for example in many grasses such as taraxacum while in apogamy embryo is developed from antipodal cell or synergid for example in onion plant now we will discuss about the sexual reproduction in this type male and female gametes are fused to develop into progeny plant in crop plants male and female gametes are produced in a special structure known as flower a typical flower has four walls outermost wall is called calyx and its each unit is called sepal second wall is called corolla and its each unit is called petal third wall is called androecium and its each unit is called stamen which is the male part of plant innermost wall is called gynoecium which is the female part of plant and its each unit is called carpel first of all we will discuss about the microsporogenesis in crop plants microspores are also called as pollen grains these microspores are produced inside the anther of stamen each stamen has two parts anther and filament anther is the main part of stamen if we take a transverse section of anther 
there are four microsporangia on four corners. Each microsporangium contain diploid pollen mother cells, which undergo meiosis to produce pollen grains. First of all, PMC produce two cells by meiosis first, which is called dyad. Then this dyad produce a microspore tetrad by meiosis second. All four microspores get separated and mature into pollen grains. Initially, each microspore contain a single haploid nucleus, but later this nucleus undergo mitosis and produce two male nuclei. Next, we will discuss about the megasporogenesis. In crop plants, megaspores are produced in megasporangia, which are also known as ovules. Ovules are produced in carpels. Carpel has three parts, stigma, style and ovary. Ovules are developed inside the ovary on placenta. If we take a longitudinal section of ovule, then we see that any diploid cell of nucellus turns into megaspore mother cell. First of all, MMC produce two cells by meiosis first, which is called as dyad. Then this dyad undergo meiosis second and produce a linear megaspore tetrad. Out of four, upper three megaspores get degraded and only lower one survive. Nucleus of megaspore undergo three successive mitotic divisions which result in eight nucleated cell. This eight nucleated cell get further modified into an embryo sac in which two polar nuclei and one egg cell are important. Next, we will discuss about the pollination. When anthers are matured, pollens are released by dyson's. These pollens are now transferred onto the stigma by various agents. This process is called as pollination. On stigma, pollen grain get germinates and produce a pollen tube. This pollen tube carry two male nuclei into the embryo sac of ovule. In crop plants, fertilization has two specific features. The first feature is double fertilization. As we know that pollen grain contain two male nuclei. One male nucleus fuses with egg cell to produce diploid zygote which will further develop into a diploid embryo. Second male nucleus fuses with two polar nuclei to produce triploid primary endosperm nucleus or pan which will further develop into a triploid endosperm to provide nourishment to developing embryo. The second feature is triple fusion. In second fertilization, as we see that one male nucleus fuses with two polar nuclei, hence three nuclei fuse with each other. This process is called as triple fusion. Next topic we will discuss about is pollination modes. Transfer of pollen grain from any flower to stigma of same flower or other flower is called pollination. There are two modes of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. First of all, we learn about self-pollination. Transfer of pollen grains from one flower to stigma of same flower or other flower of the same plant is called self-pollination. Main character of self-pollination is that only one plant participate in progeny production. It is of two types, autogamy and jutonogamy. Transfer of pollen grains from one flower to the stigma of the same flower is called autogamy. While transfer of pollen grains from one flower to the stigma of the other flower of the same plant is called jutonogamy. This is found in both unisexual and bisexual flowers. To make self-pollination successful, plants must have following adaptations. The first adaptation is bisexuality. For self-pollination, it is necessary that both male and female parts 
must be found in the same flower. Sometimes plants having unisexual flowers also shows some self-pollination as in maize. But most self-pollinated plants have bisexual flowers. Second adaptation is homomaturation. In a bisexual flower, both stamens and carpels get matured at the same time simultaneously. Third adaptation is Clistogamy. In some plants, flowers remain always in closed condition and they never open. Hence, they show 100% self-pollination such as Drosera, Oxalis, Wheat, Garden Pea, Barley, etc. Examples of self-pollinated crops are wheat, barley, rice, oat, pea, etc. Secondly, we will learn about cross-pollination. Transfer of pollen grains from one flower to the stigma of flower of the other plant is called cross-pollination. Cross-pollination is found in both types of plants having unisexual flowers or bisexual flowers. Main character of cross pollination is that two different plants participate in progeny production. For cross pollination, transfer of pollens is done by various factors. On this basis, cross pollination is divided into four categories. Entomophily is the pollination by insects, anemophily is the pollination by wind, hydrophily is the pollination by water, and zoophily is the pollination by animals. Next we learn about the adaptations for cross pollination. To make cross pollination successful, flowers must have following adaptations. The first adaptation is unisexuality. Many crops have unisexual flowers. These crops are either monoecious or dioecious. Mainly cross pollination occurs in these crops due to unisexual flowers. Second adaptation is heteromaturation. In some plants, pollens and stigma do not mature at the same time. Instead, they mature at different times. This is called heteromaturation. This is of two types. The first type is protandry. In some crops, pollens mature earlier before stigma become receptive as in maize, sugar beet, etc. Maize have both unisexuality as well as protandry. Second type is protogyny. In some crops, stigma become receptive earlier before the pollens get matured, as in bajra. Third adaptation is waxy cover on stigma. A waxy cover is found on the stigma of lucerne plant. Stigma can't become receptive before removal of this waxy cover. This waxy cover get breaks by honey bees when they sit on flowers. As a result, cross pollination takes place by pollens transported by bees. The fourth adaptation is self incompatibility. In many crops, alive and active pollens produced by flowers of a plant are unable to fertilize the flowers of the same plant. This is called self incompatibility. In this situation, 100% cross pollination takes place, as in mustard, rye, turnip, cabbage, tobacco, etc. The fifth adaptation is male sterility. Pollens produced by some strains of many species are dead and inactive, hence, they are unable to pollinate any flower. This is called male sterility. Normally, Natural populations do not have male sterility, but it is useful in plant breeding. Examples of cross-pollinated crops are maize, bajra, etc.